Today here on campus, we did some enrichment problems. We worked these problems, which you can download from the course website, <clears throat> or if you don't want to bother logging into the course website, you can just pause the recording and then try these problems for yourself and then hit resume when you're ready. So these are the four problems we did today. Here are problems one through three, and actually there's number four, so we can fit it all on one screen. So stop the recording, try these for yourself, and then hit resume when you are ready to see the answers. So now we're going to go over each one of these here in class so that everybody is walking out with the uh, correct answers. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, ammonia gas. We're gonna look at some reactions involving ammonia. So ammonia gas is produced by the reaction between nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Are those monatomic gases or diatomic gases? They're what? They're diatomic, right? So N2 and H2. And what is the formula for ammonia? NH3, right. All right, is that balanced? What do we need? We need a two here and a three here, right? Can we do these problems without a balanced equation? No, we can't. So I want to know, is this reaction spontaneous at 85 degrees Celsius? So how do I calculate spontaneity? What do I ultimately need to calculate? We need to know delta G, right? And what's the formula for delta G? Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. All right, T delta S. So how do I get delta H and delta S? I get to use my reference page, right? So I gave you a hard copy of this in class. It's also posted on the course website. And then there are about a thousand of those available on the internet as well. So just a reminder that depending on the reference page you're looking at, your number of sig figs might vary on that um, reference information ever so slightly. So I got delta H is two times negative 45.9 minus zero, right? Uh, and that gives me, because this is zero, this is zero. So that gives me negative 91.8 units here are kilojoules, right? For delta S, I got, two times 192.7 minus, I got 191.6 plus 3130.6. So that gave me negative 198 joules. <clears throat> now what problem do I have here? One's in joules, one's in kilojoules. So I don't care which one you pick. Do we agree on the values of delta H and delta S? Because we we're using the same reference page. So we should have very, very similar values. I converted to kilojoules. So that's negative 0 0.198 kilojoules. And so now delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Don't forget to convert temperature to Kelvin. So negative 91.8 minus 358 times negative 0 0.198. So I got negative 20.9 kilojoules. Based on that, will we conclude that we are spontaneous or non-spontaneous at this temperature? Yes, we are spontaneous. What does spontaneous mean? Right, no outside help. Is it gonna be spontaneous at all temperatures? Is this reaction gonna occur spontaneously at all temperatures? No, we can only conclude based on the temperature that I used for my calculations. Any questions on number one? Feeling good about number one? 
right, so, so when we're doing these kinds of calculations, there's really not much nasty math. The part that really gets you in trouble is writing a balanced equation. Right? If you don't have a balanced equation, you're kind of up the creek. But beyond that, it's really just plugging in some numbers. Ammonia gas can be produced by the reaction between hydrazine and hydrogen gas. All right, so I gave you the formula for hydrazine, N2H4. And I uh, produce a react that with hydrogen gas. I think it's NH3. Is that balanced? No, what do I need to balance it? I need a what? A two. All right, that's a gas, that's a gas. If you're gonna carry out this reaction at 85 degrees Celsius and wanna produce as much ammonia as possible, should you use liquid hydrazine or gaseous hydrazine? How do you know the answer to this problem? Right, you're gonna calculate delta G using N2H4 liquid, then you're gonna calculate delta G using N2H4 gas and compare, right? And then how will you know the winner? Which one should you pick? The one that gives you the, the larger and more positive or more negative delta G? Larger, more negative delta G. Okay, so uh, let's do the calculations for gas. Let's see, I got delta H is equal to two times negative 45.9 minus 95.35 plus zero. So that's negative 187.15 kilojoules. For delta S, I got two times 192.7 minus 238.6 plus 130.6, right? It's always products minus reactants. And where are all these numbers coming from? Coming from my reference page, right? I'm just pulling them straight from my reference page. So that gave me 16.2 joules. I converted it to kilojoules. So divide by 1,000, so that's 0 0.0162 kilojoules. And then when I did delta G, delta H minus T delta S, plugging that in, that gives me negative 187.15 minus 358 times 0.0162. So that gives me negative 192.95, so we'll round that to negative 193 kilojoules. So that's for using gas. And then for liquid, right, because I've got to compare it to the liquid. For liquid, my values are gonna vary just a tiny little bit, right, because this is the same, this is the same, the only difference is this number here. So I shouldn't expect my answer to deviate a whole lot, but it would be enough for me to pick two, negative 45.9 minus 50.63, that's the difference, plus zero, so I got, negative 142.4 kilojoules. And then for delta S, I got two times 192.7, that part's still the same, minus 121.4 plus 130.6. So that gave me 133.4 joules which I converted to kilojoules, 0 0.1334 kilojoules. Are we in agreement in delta H and delta S for the gas, I mean for the liquid phase? So now all I need to do is plug into delta G, see what delta G gives me. Delta H minus T delta S. So that would be 
negative 142.4 minus my temperature is still 358 and my delta s is 1334 so i got negative 190 0.19, so we'll call this negative 190. Is that a significantly large difference? No. I mean, would you expect it to be? This part didn't change, this part didn't change, so you're just comparing liquid to gas. Now, sometimes that does make a huge difference, but in this case, you're going to get a lot of ammonia either way, right, because they're both large and negative numbers. Which one would give you the most though? The gas, right. That value's bigger, so you should use the gas. But you're gonna get a lot either way, because both of those values are pretty close to each other. I mean, if you're rounding to two sig figs, they would be the same. We feel pretty good about how to do these procedures. It's starting to feel really repetitive. Hopefully it is, because it kind of is a repetitive process. But that's good, because if you feel like you're just doing the same thing over and over and over, right? That means you're getting it down, you're getting the hang of it. Theoretically, carbon dioxide gas could decompose into solid carbon graphite. Where do you find graphite? That's what's in your pencil, right? And oxygen gas. Would this reaction occur spontaneously at room temperature, which we're calling 25 degrees Celsius? All right, so carbon dioxide gas, CO2, breaking down into C solid, and we do need to specify that's graphite, right? Because our reference page has different data for graphite versus diamond, right? So make sure we're looking at the graphite data, plus O2. And before we do any math, do you think this is gonna be spontaneous? We're at pretty darn close to room temperature right now. I think the temp in this room is about 23. Uh, what's happening in your pencil? Is anyone getting this? Uh, I mean, excuse me, what's happening in the air? Are we seeing graphite like falling out of the air right now? No, so, I mean, just qualitatively before we, we get going on here, I think we can conclude that this is probably gonna be non-spontaneous, but let's, let's do some math to back it up. So we need to calculate delta H and delta S before we can calculate delta G. So I got for delta H, zero plus zero, right? Because that's the most stable form. That's the most stable form. Minus negative 393.5. So that's just 393.5 kilojoules. For delta S, I got 5.74 plus 205 minus 213.7, so that's negative 2.96 joules, dividing by 1,000, negative 0 0.00296 kilojoules. Do we agree on delta H and delta S? We agree on these two values for delta H and delta S from the reference page, yes? All right, so then delta G, delta H minus T, delta S. So 393.5 minus 298, got to convert to Kelvin, times negative 0 0.00296. When I plug that in, I got 394.4 kilojoules. Positive large value of delta G. So is this spontaneous or non-spontaneous at room temperature? It's highly non-spontaneous, right? Non-spontaneous at room temperature, right? I mean, which goes along with what we would qualitatively expect. We're breathing CO2 right now, and it's not turning into graphite and oxygen gas. I don't see any graphite just falling from the air. Right? That's a good thing. You're gonna have to go to a different temperature if you want this to happen spontaneously. Any questions on three? 
Feel good about three? All right, last one. Nice review of net ionic equations. So number four asks us, also ties in some knowledge of the activity series. If you combine 50 mils of one molar magnesium chloride with aluminum metal at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, will a single displacement reaction occur? And we're only looking at the net ionic equation. So does the molarity and the volume matter here? Is that gonna weigh into our calculations at all? No, no it's not, right? We're just saying this is the concentration and this is the volume we're dealing with. We want to know, is the single displacement reaction going to occur? So the first thing we need to do is we need to write our reaction so we can figure out our, our chemistry. And magnesium chloride has what formula? I'll give you this part. What's the rest? Cl2. And that's a molarity and a volume. So what state of matter would that be? Aq. And aluminum metal would be what? Al, what state? Solid. All right, what's the single displacement reaction that we're talking about? AlCl3, right? And what's the other product? Mg, no, magnesium's not diatomic, it's just regular old Mg. Solid. So that's the molecular equation. What, what, well first we need to balance this. How do we need to balance this? We need a three here, right? And a two here, and a two here, and a three here. So that's the molecular equation. What's the net ionic equation? Who's the spectator? It would be the what? What's the spectator ion? Want to dissociate this out, or do we, can we just do it in our heads? If we dissociate this out, we'll get 3Mg2 plus, plus 6Cl minus, plus 2Al gives us 2Al3 plus, plus 6Cl minus, plus 3Mg. So that's the complete ionic. So what's the net ionic equation? Oops. Giving myself more room here. Who's the spectator? Gen Kim 1 review, who's the spectator? Chloride, right. So when I get rid of the chloride, I'm left with the net ionic, 3Mg2+, plus, plus 2Al, gives me 2Al3+, plus, plus 3Mg. And my goal is to determine, is this reaction going to occur at room temperature? Why or why not? Now we can answer this based on what we know about the activity series and the reactivity of magnesium metal. If you have magnesium metal in water, is that a good combination? No, it's not. Right? I mean, we can predict before we even do any math that some outcome is not going to be preferred. So let's go ahead and do the arithmetic. So for delta H, I got 3 times 0 plus 2 times negative 531 minus 3 times negative 466.9 plus 2 times 0, right? Because you've got a pure element in its most stable form and pure element is most stable form. And then we got two ions, right? That's what's given us those humongous numbers. We got two ions that we're dealing with. So 
when I crunched those numbers, I got 338.7 kilojoules. So if this does happen, it's got a pretty large positive delta H value. So does that mean it would be hot or cold if it did happen? Think about that one. I won't make you answer in front of everybody. All right. For delta S, 3 times 32.67 plus 2 times negative 321.7. Which is a similar notation. And then 3 times negative 138.1 plus 2 times 28.28. I got negative 187.7 joules. So negative. 0 0.187 kilojoules. All right. I guess I could carry that 0.7. There we go. So for delta G, delta H minus T delta S. So plugging in. 338.7 minus 298, because that's our Kelvin temperature, negative 0 0.1877. I got <coughs> 394.6 kilojoules. Do we agree on delta G here? Spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Non-spontaneous. And you can go back to the lab and try this for yourself. You're not going to get this reaction to take place at room temperature. <coughs> Which again, goes along with what we know about magnesium metal, right? So this matches things that we know qualitatively, activity series, things we know from the lab, etc. How do we feel about these kinds of problems? about calculating delta G. Because if you can't calculate delta G, next week you're sunk, okay? Because this is prerequisite knowledge for next week. If you can't do this, take some time this weekend and master it, okay? Because Monday, we're gonna hit the ground and this is gonna be stuff that I assume you know walking in the door. All right, so if you have questions, you can stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday.